name is Kathleen Carlucci. I'm the Director of Interpretation at the Thomas Edison Center at Menlo Park, located in Edison, New Jersey. I'm going to take you on a tour today to see some of his original artifacts and see the interpretation that we've done recently with our major renovation. This area right here in the museum shows all the different commemorative items that have been done during our time here at Menlo Park. Edison came to Menlo Park in 1876. The next year, he invents an item that is so amazing, he becomes known as the Wizard of Menlo Park. We start here, and we show you the different things that have happened throughout the years. Edison invents the phonograph. This was an amazing invention that he is world famous for. Two years later, he perfects incandescent light. Christie Street, right in front of our building, is the first street in the world lit with perfected incandescent light. While Edison heads to New York to build the first central power station, he comes back in 1925 and a monument is built and dedicated in his honor, which is located on Route 27 at the end of Christie Street. And then in 1929, for the 50th anniversary of incandescent light, the first tower at this site was built. Underneath the tower was an item called the Eternal Light. While the original tower was knocked down by lightning, we understand, the Eternal Light survived and it is in our current tower today. In 1937, this area became known as the Edison Park, the Thomas Edison Park. It is a state park. We have almost 36 acres here today. You can also see here, we have many different commemoratives. We have stamps that were done. This was for 1929, which was the 50th anniversary of incandescent light. We actually have old postcards that show what the site did look like a long time ago. The museum building itself was built in the 1940s as a gatehouse for the tower. We also have stamps that have been done in Edison's honor. We have coins that have been struck. When Edison was here at Menlo Park, in his Raritan Township, thought was given to change the name of this area because there were many Raritans, and in 1954, the name Township of Edison was chosen. We're very proud to say that the Edison Memorial Tower is the symbol of the Township of Edison. We're also very proud to be an IEEE milestone site. IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers and this is a very great honor. And we also have plans to build on this almost 36 acre site, a hands-on interactive museum. And that's what the Edison Memorial Tower Corporation, a nonprofit group, is trying to work on today. We welcome new members to the Edison Memorial Tower Corporation. We have memberships available and we hope that people will join. We have local residents, people who live in the state of New Jersey, who live in the United States and worldwide. Every day that we are open to the public, we have visitors from other countries. Edison is truly honored. This is a drawing of 1880 Menlo Park done by one of Edison's workers named Altkalt. He was a young man who was hired to do Edison's patent application drawings. What we do with this drawing is to show you where we are today. The museum building is right where the machine shop once stood and our current tower is located where Edison's main laboratory building was. This site was so important that Edison will create 400 of his most important 1,093 U.S. patents here in a less than a six year period. These different buildings are important. This is the machine shop, carpenter shed. This is the glass house where the first experimental light bulbs were made. Over here, we have the carbon shed where carbon was made burning kerosene lanterns. Carbon plays a very important part in Edison's later research. This is the blacksmith shop where any iron implements were made. And this is Edison's library and office where we do have the foundation still visible on the property. Right across the street was the first experimental electric train in the United States that Edison used to test the distribution of electricity and Christie Street, the first street in the world lit with perfected incandescent light. In 1879, Edison wanted to show his perfected incandescent light. And so he invites the public, the press, 
and financiers to come to this site on New Year's Eve. He lights the buildings that were on the property and the street. And at the strike of midnight, he hits a big switch and all of a sudden we have the lighted city. This was such a popular site that the Pennsylvania Railroad, today known as the Northeast Corridor, had to add extra trains on night so people could come by to see the lighted city. People are still coming from all over the world. Many people ask us about Edison, what made him the man he was, what type of education he had, you know, what were some of the influences on his life? And that's what this section, Meet the Wizard, does. We talk about his family life, his early education, you know, the books that he read, you know, the things that inspired him to make him the man he was. And we follow this all the way through up until 1876, when he does come to Menlo Park. One of the highlights of this section is our old-fashioned texting, the telegraph key. So actually, visitors can come, this is one of our hands-on, and they can try their hand at Morse code. This was something that inspired Edison, and he loved, he loved the telegraph, and he loved Morse code. Thomas Edison moves to Menlo Park with his family in 1876. By November, the following year, 1877, he invents the machine that will make him the most famous man in the world, the phonograph. And then he'll follow that up two years later with perfected incandescent lights. This is why Menlo Park is an important site that you should visit. This is our Hall of Patents where we showcase 20 of Edison's important patents done during his time at Menlo Park. I do like people that take a, a particular interest in this frame graph that we have. This is a, shows the patent years that Edison was creating inventions. And what is, in particular, it shows where all those large spikes are going up high. Edison was his most prolific at this site. This is where Edison invents the whole concept of R&D. And at Menlo Park, he was his most prolific. As a matter of fact, he called his laboratory his invention factory because that's how many um, new inventions he created during this time. This wall in particular shows what this site looked like during the 1880s. This photo shows Menlo Park high up on the hills. We are actually the highest point on the railroad from New York to Philadelphia. And so when Edison talks about the rolling hills and how beautiful it was, this is what it was pictured like. This is what he sees during that time. There were five main buildings on the laboratory site at that time. None of the buildings do survive, but we have a description of each one and some of the work that was done there. What's interesting is you can see some of Edison's workers. In particular, his workers are standing on the top floor of the laboratory. Now this is where the tower stands today. And I was mentioning how high we were. His workers actually in a letter wrote that they were watching the building of the Brooklyn Bridge from that top site there. This is a description of the different buildings and it tells what, you know, what their name was and what the work was done in each one. Now this was almost a complex. There were many people working here. It was a real tight knit community. The workers lived locally and a lot of the single men would, lived in the Sarah Jordan boarding house. That was located just a little ways down the street. Everybody was within walking distance. Sarah Jordan was a woman who was a widow. She was a relative of Edison's wife, Mary Stilwell Edison and she lived on one half of the house with her daughter and with her maid, and the single men lived on the other half. She was evidently very well known for her pies. In this picture, we have a close-up of the blacksmith shop and of the carbon shed. It was actually the night watchman's job to go to the carbon shed at the end of the evening where kerosene lanterns had been burning all night long, and his job was to scrape the carbon, the black soot, and make carbon buttons which were very instrumental in Edison's research. And this area today is right behind where our tower stands. The carpenter shed was really important in Edison's work also. This is where all the patterns would be made and any other wood products that they needed. He, he needed to create examples and, and do testing on it. All these individual buildings are really important in the work Edison does here. This site, Menlo Park, is known as the world's first organized research lab. 
Edison had come across different problems that had happened while he was trying to make other inventions before. And he knew that he wanted to bring all these experts together. And so we needed all these different buildings that were filled with craftsmen, you know, experts in their own field and different engineers so that Edison could be quick about getting all the different answers to the different questions he had while doing research. And this is one of the reasons why his, he was so prolific at this site because he could go right back to the pattern shop, for example, and have something adjusted. Or he could go to the machine shop and have a correction made. And this is what enabled him to be as successful as he was at Menlo Park. This is a picture of the machine shop with some of the workers in front. This was a very important building. And actually, our current museum is located on the footprint of what would have been uh, the machine shop, although it was a much larger building than we have here. The machine shop is a very important feature of this entire complex. This is where all the machines were made. In particular, it's where the tin foil phonograph was made. I mean, this is the item that makes him known as the Wizard of Menlo Park. Also, the dynamos were inside the machine shop building. And this is what would power the system that he would show on New Year's Eve, the perfected incandescent lights. The glass house was a small building, but really important. This is where the glass blower actually would make the first experimental light bulbs. Also the vacuum pump, which is an integral part of Edison's later success with the incandescent light. He does perfect the incandescent light. Any glass instruments that were needed were also made there. So it really was an important, important uh, factor. The last building Edison built on this site was his office and library, which we do still have the foundation of. I mean, this is where Edison's changing, you know, from that he changes a little bit beforehand, but really he comes into his own with the organized research lab because he builds a very big library. It's something that he utilizes, but also something that his workers could utilize. He develops the team uh, research approach, and it makes a big difference in his later work. Now, this photograph in particular is shown later after Edison leaves, and you can see some squatters have moved into the building. This is a drawing of Edison's home, which was located on the corner of Route 27 and uh, Christie Street. It actually served as the business office and model home for the Menlo Park housing development that Edison bought. And it was right across the street from the Pennsylvania Railroad, which was a wonderful aspect of this property because he could get back into town in order to meet with different investors. This is a photograph that we had blown up of the Menlo Park machine shop. As I mentioned, this area was well photographed and we have a wealth of different photos we can share. Up here in the corner, we have a woodcut. It's the exact replica of this photograph, but people were put in. At that time, they did not have the technology to put photographs in newspapers, so woodcuts such as this were done. That's why a lot of the things you see are drawings. Now, Edison had you know, grown up and learned in a machine shop culture, but he will develop the R&D culture here. He'll start in his Newark shop, but then this is where it will really come to fruition. One thing about Edison is he sets goals for himself. His goal here was that he would have a small invention every 10 days and a large one every six months. He will actually exceed his own expectations and that was a pretty lofty goal at that time. Machines such as this one, the lathe, were used at Menlo Park. And on the lathe would be made machines like this. This is a replica of the tin foil phonograph. Edison was working on another project when he thought he heard something. And so he draws this drawing, located here, and he gives it to his Swiss train machinist, John Crusey, who builds it. This is the only invention Edison said that worked the first time he tried it. He's very famous for spinning the wheel and saying, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. Menlo Park is important because this is where not only was sound recorded, but also where it's played back. This is the device that made him known as the Wizard of Menlo Park. And this is how this device worked. This is a copy of a newspaper and it shows you a piece of tin foil. The tin foil would be wrapped around the cylinder. 
there would be a stylus on there. You would speak into the diaphragm, which would move the stylus and would record the sound in these grooves. You would have to turn the wheel, it was manually done. People were amazed by this invention. Nobody was even thinking about something like this at that time. And so he had copies of his tinfoil phonograph made and they were sent around the world. And there were exhibitions to show this amazing device. This light bulb was actually made at Menlo Park. It was made in 1880 and it has a bamboo filament. Now, of course, this is all completely handmade. As I mentioned, they made the carbon right here on the site. So this was you know, a project that involved many of the different people and buildings that were here. It's a fabulous, fabulous thing that Edison perfects incandescent light here. But what he does, which is even more important, is he develops a whole system of electricity distribution. And he tests that out here. He, had, he did try many different items uh, as a filament until he did come on bamboo. And the first commercial light bulbs were made here. The building in the background shown here was called the Lamp Works because actually each light bulb was called a lamp at that time. And that was located on the other side of the railroad tracks away from Menlo. You can see all the workers here, but there just weren't enough to keep up with the demand. So Edison's factory did move. What Edison does here at Menlo Park is he doesn't invent the light bulb. He makes the perfected incandescent light. But really what he does is he commercializes the electric light bulb. He makes it longer lasting. And so it's a more practical light bulb. I want you to please come down and visit our museum. We have so many amazing original artifacts that we love to show and you'll definitely be interested in some of the other items that you've never even known that Edison was making. This case has quite a bit of archeology span that was found on the site. It was actually very hard to pick out exactly which pieces we wanted to put out because two archeologists have done digs here at the site and it was amazing that they found these items. Uh, one of the items in particular are pieces of a vacuum pump, which of course, as I mentioned earlier, was instrumental in Edison's research but you see things such as crucibles that were used to mix different chemicals, a copper spoon, mica, a thermometer, wires. I mean, just amazing things. This long piece right here is actually the handle for a water pump on the site. We also have this rail from the uh, experimental uh, electric train that was here at Menlo Park. This train went quite a ways. It went through what's now known as Edison, down through Metuchen to an area that was known as Pumptown Corners. There was an also another shoot of it that went up to what today is known as Oak Tree Road. There had been a copper mine there. And so this is very local and it was very important. And it's still very important to learn about our history today. This enlarged photo is the inside upstairs of Edison's laboratory. You can tell by the the, fit, the photo, the way the men dressed at that time. But this is a photo of exactly what it looked like. These glass jars that you see on top of the counter are actually wet cell batteries at that time. And a lot of the different instruments that he used, there's a lathe actually that's laying right there also. I'm gonna read from this excerpt from the Daily Graphic talking about this laboratory. This is a photo enlarged of the upstairs of the laboratory. And per the document, it says, upstairs we climbed to a room the size of the building with 20 windows on sides and ends. It's walled with shelves of bottles like an apothecary shop, thousands of bottles of all sizes and colors. On benches and tables are batteries of all descriptions, microscopes, magnifying glasses, crucibles, retorts, and ash covered forge, and all the apparatus of a chemist. Edison actually is a very gifted chemist. Um, he learns this and studies this since he's a young man. And we like to showcase what was being done. This was a working shop at that time. Right below here is actually one of our newest acquisitions. We were very grateful to receive this as a donation. This machine is actually known as a dynamo. And Edison had called it a long-waisted uh, Marianne. And it's also known as a bipolar dynamo. And it was uh, made in 1882, when Edison was still coming to Menlo Park. It was made in his New York machine shop. 
I have a Scientific American from 1879, which shows the interior of the machine shop. And you can see a bipolar dynamo right there with some of the workers um, working on it and correcting it. In this case, we have a telegraph key and sounder and a repeater. Um, a lot of Edison's early background is working with telegraphy and his research is funded by Western Union. They would pay $100 a month to help sustain the machine shop. R&D, research and development, is very expensive and Edison will continue to work on the telegraph and the repeater to improve these different devices. The telegraph at that time, well, even before he comes to Menlo, is the world's first long distance communication system and it was very important. It really was the height of technology and Edison actually loves this machine and will do so much important work with it. Behind it is a later Edison wet cell battery. A lot of uh, Edison's early work was actually taking part with the telephone and uh, he actually will perfect Bell's telephone for him. The problem with Bell's phone was they didn't transmit far. Um, many people were working on the telephone, but Alexander Graham Bell has the patent. But Edison will perfect the telephone here. He'll create something known as a carbon button transmitter. This device was in every phone until the 1980s when phones became digital. So we'd like you to come down and see what this phone looked like at that time. This is an original Edison phone. <laughs> Edison will work on the phonograph here in 1877, but it's not until after he leaves Menlo Park that he actually develops a phonograph that he's selling to the public. Uh, the first phonographs had records made out of a brown wax cylinder. What we have here at Menlo, and all our original Edison phonographs do work, are other types of uh, cylinders. We have a black plastic, and we also have blue amberol. Uncle Sam right now is dancing on top of a disc record. These phonographs were all made at his West Orange facility, but we play them here because this is the birthplace of recorded sound and where it was played back. And people are just thrilled. These three in particular are over 100 years old and they all still work. Let me show you how the cylinder phonograph works. This one in particular, uh, this cylinder, this record, is made out of what's known as blue amberol. The records, the cylinder records, were sold in containers like this. This is an original cylinder container. Edison's picture is on this and his name. Edison puts his name on everything he makes, and so you could be sure it was made very well. This machine is not electric, it doesn't use batteries, it's all mechanical, so it has to be wound up. The wind actually lasts for quite a long period of time. Phonographs at that time did not have volume control, so some of us are familiar with the expression, put a sock in it. That's how they would reduce the sound of the different phonographs. They would actually show a sock into the bell of the phonograph. And this is how you reduce the volume at that time. You can see on this phonograph, that's the Thomas A. Edison trademark, but it is also his signature. It's a very famous signature, and it is known as the umbrella signature. This is our hands-on interactive center right here. We have some local people come by and people from all over the world, as I mentioned. The children, we have many different drawings that they can color. They can either take them home with them or they can hang them up as you see some of these are done. We also have a little a system showing what parallel and series circuits do. And I tell you, when I see the youngsters, especially in like middle school, showing their parents, oh, I know what this is, and now they're explaining it to their parent, it lights all their faces up and it really makes us very excited. And of course, when you come down, you can try your hand at making electricity. This is called a magneto. If you turn around, you can make the light bulb light. And it also shows that you have to have a closed circuit. If you don't have a closed circuit, you won't have power. These are just a few of the things that we have right now. We hope to expand this hands-on interactive experience. This is not just for children. It is for the children in all of us. 
This is a picture of Edison seated on the front of his laboratory with some of his workers. And down below is a, another woodcut showing what the inside of the laboratory looks like. This model of Edison's laboratory, the one he called the Invention Factory, was made out of pieces of the original. And it was given as a gift to Edison in 1922 by the Edison pioneers. It was from the second floor porch that Edison's workers were watching the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. He changed this site forever and would live most of his life in the confines of New Jersey. This is the image of the Wizard of Menlo Park. It is something we have on our t-shirt, but it really captures the imagination, you know, for our young students. I have tours all year long. I have them at night. I have them during the day. Um, I get many school groups and they just, I don't know, they seem to get excited about this Thomas Edison. You know, it's, he's one of those figures that makes you feel like, boy, if I just work a little harder, maybe I can do that. And he really captures and sparks the imagination. You know, we sell books on Thomas Edison in our gift shop in order for children to learn about him, but also to give them an idea of maybe I can do that, or with hard work, I can do this. You know, or, or read because he was a voracious reader. We want to encourage children to learn and we also want to teach about Thomas Edison and we also want to teach about civic pride in Edison itself. We hope you enjoyed this little tour of our museum. There's so much more to see and so much more to read and we hope that you'll come and visit us. We are open to the public Thursday through Saturday 10 until 4. I am open other days and times for special tours. We are located at 37 Christie Street in Edison and we welcome you to come.